Good morning. It is Sunday, and that means it is time for another Hook of the Week here at Black Bear Forge. Welcome back to the shop. So what do you say we take a look in our used-to-be-a-bucket of useful materials and see what's left? It's getting pretty low, but we still have a few weeks of material in here, and I counted 19 more buckets. At the rate we're going, that means we probably end up with something like 10 years worth of Hook of the Week if we keep doing it in the way we're doing it. So don't worry, we're not likely to run out anytime soon. But anyways, back to the bucket. As I mentioned before, I think I'm going to save some of these more dramatic materials for the end of the project out of this bucket. And I've got something in mind for these little pieces, but not quite ready to do those. It's a nice piece of quarter by three quarter and some quarter by one and a half. Let's start with these. So for everybody that wants metric measurements, quarter inch is about six millimeters, three quarters of inch is about 20 millimeters, and this is five inches long, which is about 130 millimeters. Then we have our quarter or six millimeter flat bar that's actually inch and three quarters wide, so that's about 50 millimeters wide, and it's pretty close to square, although it doesn't have a good square end. So one of the first things I'll do is I'll square this up. Now, what kind of a hook do we want to make out of this? Well, to me, this square piece looks like it ought to be a back plate. And then we can either do a hook like this, make quite a few hooks that look kind of like that. So I'm thinking we will mount it in the middle, draw the ends out, and make some sort of a double hook out of this. So grab your safety glasses and let's head over to the forge. Let's just start by putting a bevel around the edge of the back plate. That just gets this done. When I cleaned up that edge, I made this perfectly square. And what that means is I think it's going to look really good if we actually make our hook on the diamond here instead of doing it square. Let's put it diagonally and I think that'll be an interesting back plate. I think I'm going to leave a wide spot in this hook where it will attach to the back plate. I'm going to neck in on either side of that and let it flare out. Hopefully that makes sense. And if you're really good, you can just get this shouldered nicely at the edge of the anvil. And if you're not that good, you can use a guillotine tool or a spring sledge. Mine's going to need a little bit of help here. It's not shouldering as perfectly as I would like. A little cleanup with a file might be in order. And I'm not too worried about this being perfectly centered at this point. Since it'll be a double hook, I usually like one hook to be a little longer than the other one anyways. <clears throat> I'm letting this flare out width-wise, but I'm tapering it a little bit thickness-wise.
I'm going to repeat that on the other end, leaving just enough here to get a rivet in the middle so we can attach it to the back plate. bit better job of getting the shoulder on this one. You can always clean it up with a file if you need to. Let's go over the horn to draw that out a little bit more. not worried too much about the exact length of these hook arms. I do want them to be relatively even taper and flare. At this point, you do any filing that you need to do to clean these up and then make sure everything's straight before we turn it into a hook. So just that little bit of straightening is probably about all we're going to need here. And I want to go take a file and I want to clean this end up, make sure that's round evenly and the same thing. This other end is actually a little bit less symmetrical, so I really want to clean it up. And then anything I need to do in these shoulders. So I will be right back. So I cleaned this up a little bit and went ahead and put two 3 16 holes in there that we we'll use to rivet it to the back plate. Added my touch mark, so this is ready to finish. Straighten it out a little bit. Now these hooks are not exactly the same length, but they're pretty darn close. This one is <clears throat> this one is a quarter inch longer than this one. Generally, I want the longer hook on the bottom because this has to roll all the way up, and this hook just comes out and goes up a little bit, so it doesn't need as much material in the upper hook as it does the lower hook. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and put a little bit of a curl on these. I'm not going to do a full wrap just enough to ease the edge where you hang things on the hook. I just want to put that little bit of a roll on the end of the top hook here. Just like that I think is all we need. That rolls to the front. Then we'll go to the vise and we'll bend this hook. Just put that hook up in the vise right at the edge of the back plate or the mounting point to the back plate and we hold it with another pair of tongs here and just work this forward. And we've looked at doing this before but this is a real easy way to make a nice graceful top hook on something like this. Check it for straight not twisted. 
Now for the lower hook, I want to bend this away from the, the front of the hook or towards the back of the hook is where I want to go because it will come up more than 180 degrees. So we want to make sure that comes out on the right side. And today I think I'll just use a simple bending fork for this. I cooled that end off so we don't mess up our little scroll. Now this is not just a form when you use a bending fork like this. So you have to kind of work with a little bit and make sure you don't end up with kinks in your hook. That looks pretty good. And something that's real important is that you can still get in here to this hole to set that rivet. And that's just barely going to be enough space, I think, but I think it will work. So now I want to mount our hook onto our back plate, which probably isn't perfectly symmetrical since we textured the edges by hand. So get it lined up kind of the way you want it. Pretty happy with that. The one place these mechanical pencils work well because you can drop the lead all the way out like that and get way down in the hole. A transfer punch, which is an exact size center punch, would be a great way to go, but I find most people don't have transfer punches. And then we'll just center punch and drill these. You can certainly punch them if you'd rather. And since I want flush head rivets in the back here, I'm going to countersink this so I got a place to put my rivet head. So then our hook should just go on here. I've got one three-quarter inch long rivet here, which might not be too bad, and I've got a half inch long one. And it's definitely too short. So let's go with the three-quarter inch rivet. It's fairly typical that your holes don't line up perfectly unless you really did a perfect job of laying this out. Using a pencil and center punching by eye isn't going to be perfect. So before we set the second rivet, we'll run a drill bit through there. Quick and easy, guarantees the holes are lined up. And any slop in the hole at that point is actually made up by the rivet being forced in, swells out, works out perfectly. I have just enough room to get a rivet set in here because I thought about that when I bent this hook to make sure I would be able to do that. I'm eyeballing down this hole to make sure it lines up as well as it possibly can with my other hole. So things are straight when I'm done. I just want to make sure that rivet head goes flush. That's good. This will be grabby, so go slow when you run the drill bit through here if it doesn't quite line up. That's all you really need though. That then gives us all the clearance we need for our rivet to go in there. Let's go ahead and set that rivet. There we go. I brought the hook back up into a black heat, gave it one last little wire brushing to make sure there was no loose scale, put a coat of Johnson's paste wax on it so that it has a nice black finish and it's protected from the elements, shouldn't rust that way, and that completes this week's Hook of the Week. I do hope you enjoyed the project. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. There's a little bell next to the subscribe button. If you ring that bell button, you'll get notifications when we make new videos, and you won't miss any of the videos here on Black Bear Forge. If you'd like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links down there in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. These are merely donations, the content is free, and will remain free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.